meetings like this, um, I don't want to throw any other actors under the bus, but I, but I know a lot of very, very serious actors and filmmakers who've been having meetings like this wow. f forever, and writers for that matter, who, uh, who take meetings like this, and it's part of, you know, what we do to do our job really well. What a moron. He looks as stupid as he sounds. He's talking about Sean Penn meeting with the number one drug lord on, on, on the earth and saying there's nothing bad about it and it's what we do, you know, to do our job really well. Yeah, it, to do our job really well of what, demoralizing and destroying a society? You're doing really well at that, Matt, the most overrated child star in history. Okay, my friends, callers, Jim, WABC, what's your topic, Jim? Go ahead, please. Yes, good evening, Michael. Uh, one thing I wanted to say is you would probably make a good running mate with Donald Trump as a VP. You should consider that. Well, uh, hold it. Let, let's talk about that. It would have been easy for me to play uh, a joker today and say to Mr. Trump, would you consider me as, as VP? I didn't do it for two reasons. One, because it would destroy his candidacy, and two, because I wouldn't make a good VP because I'm not an administrator. I'm not really a good administrator. I don't have the head for it. You really have to know how to run a large organization to do it well, you know. I mean, just because you have good ideas doesn't mean you can translate them into action. On the other hand, some people can translate very bad ideas into action. Look at Obama. So I appreciate that, but I certainly... Could you imagine the headlines if I had cornered Donald Trump, who was gracious enough to come on my show live, and I said, would you consider me to be VP? And he fell into that because he was tired and said, yes, I would. What do you think the media would do with, with that one? Michael, I would like to um, I, I, I agree with a lot of that uh, what Donald is saying, but I don't really believe that he will carry through with what he's saying. And, and I'll tell you, I'll make I'll make a prediction on your uh, radio show today that I believe that Obama and company are waiting to see if he's going to win Iowa in the primaries. And if he comes out the winner, I believe you're going to start seeing, uh, you know, some kind of stuff, the hanky-panky going on from underneath, like a DOJ investigation. You know how it is. They'll pull the rug from underneath and uh, have him uh, derail his campaign and just pull out. Well, yes, the Soviets definitely stop at nothing to defeat their enemies. That's the way it was done on the good old uh, Uncle Joseph Stalin, and it's the good way it's done by his grandson, uh, Barry from Honolulu. No, I, I expect terrible things to happen. When Donald becomes more likely the candidate, you're going to see some of the worst behavior known to American politicians. It will mimic that, if not exceed that, of one of the South American banana republics. Uh, I have a lot of I have very strong feelings about what happened to uh, the young Kennedy, who was supposed to inherit the seat that Hillary Clinton uh, uh, appeared as a carpetbagger to take. Do you remember that story? Yeah. Does anyone remember how the young Kennedy was absolutely being groomed for that liberal, that guaranteed liberal Senate seat in New York State? Do you remember what happened to him? Um, Jimmy, you, no, you, you I'll bet you, you forgot. Ask. I'll bet you forgot what happened to the young Kennedy. What happened to him? What do you mean? What happened? He disappeared. Well, what, what do you mean he disappeared? What happened? Which are you talking about? The cousin, the Kennedy cousin? No, no, no. There was a young Kennedy who was supposed to take the seat that was carved out by Moynihan in New York. It was a guaranteed lock on a liberal Senate seat. It was the road to the presidency. He was the heir apparent. And what happened to him? What happened? Well, you don't know. Called a plane disappeared over Long Island Sound. Does anyone remember that? And into the breach there came a carpetbagger and bought a house, became senator. Now, I'm not saying there's any connection. It was an accident, wasn't it? Well, things happen when power wants its way. We don't know what might happen when Trump is seen to be the power that will take over America. I don't think that all of these people who have been feasting on trillions of dollars are going to give it up so quickly on both sides of the aisle. It's that simple. Let's move on to other topics. 855-407-282. Petri on KSFO. Go ahead, please. Question or, or comment. 
Uh, yeah, Michael, thanks for taking the call. I'd like to pose the question of who is worse, Roman Polanski or Sean Penn? Who, both with their despicable history, and Sean Penn obviously right now doing what he's doing, but think about that. It's the sewer pipe of Hollywood that you've referenced so many times is so true. I mean, they're pumping out these movies like The Danish Girl and Carol and, and other sicko movies that are just forcing their ideas down our throat, but... It, it, let's just Penn versus Polanski. Well, okay. One was a sexual case of Polanski. What with a fourteen-year-old girl? Is that that case? I forgot already what he did. Wasn't yeah. it a young girl about fourteen? Is that is that the case of uh, Polanski? Yes, yes, of course. Uh, I mean, he made okay movies. Let's put that aside. But um, you know his behavior. Yes. The, the, that's despicable, and so he hasn't been allowed back into America. Okay, so what did Sean Penn, who's worse is what you're saying? Yeah, Avoiding and glor glor glorifying a drug dealer who's caused the death of at least 10,000 people and, and flooded America with drugs. Who's worse? I mean, I think you could figure out who's worse. And, uh, you know, who's worse? You have to take the amount of damage that e either of these individuals have done. Yeah, well, but look at Sean. Look at Sean Penn's history. Every movie he's been in, he's either killing someone or chopping them up with an axe, and then he comes out and makes believe he's anti-gun. What more do you need to know? Uh, Penn's latest movie at the time I wrote Government Zero was called The Gunman. I couldn't make it up. He starred in a typical Hollywood shoot them up action film, immediately after attacking the Second Amendment and calling guns quote cowardly killing machines. Uh, meanwhile, I wrote, I haven't heard anything about Sean Penn disarming his bodyguards. Then you have Jeffrey Katzenberg and David Geffen living lives of luxury from their for-profit film and music ventures, but raising millions for leftist politicians who attack everyone else trying to make an honest living. Then you got Weinstein, the hypocrite, uh, who says, I never owned a gun and doesn't want one, doesn't want a gun. But he has a large cadre of armed bodyguards who provide him protection the average American can't afford. And Weinstein's movies, almost every one of them is about violence, isn't it? So, yeah, this is the, uh, this is the hypocrisy, and maybe it'll come to an end. I don't really know. I'll be back in a minute. I know you appeal to Afri African Americans far more so than the polls are saying can you tell the audience why you think you appeal to African Americans in particular? Well, you know, I agree with you 100%. The relationship is incredible. And, you know, one of the polls came out and said I had 25%. That says a Republican, which would normally have five or six or maximum seven. And I have 25%. Uh, the poll recently came out showing a 25% uh, with, with African Americans. And one of the announcers said, well, wait a minute, if this is true, that means the election's over. Trump wins automatically. So, great <laughs> well, that, I just well, want to ask from the interview the earlier question. today, I, I asked the pointed question, is that not, are you? I said, why are you so popular with African Americans, Hispanics, immigrants? Now, here's a new poll came out from Gallup. The share of people identifying as Democrats has reached a record low. You don't know this. But the share of people in America who say I'm a Democrat has dropped to a record low in 2015, according to the latest liberal Gallup uh, poll results. And that shows that Americans are abandoning Obama's idea of Democrat Party. That's a huge change. People don't even want to call themselves a Democrat because of what he's done to this country. It's the lowest overall share of self-identified Democrats since the polling institution began interviewing subjects via telephone instead of in person. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? That's a very big deal. Now, here's Hillary Clinton continuing the same old, same old about Medicare, Medicaid, the environment, and women's issues. She is stuck in amber. Hillary Clinton fell into an amber pit somewhere around 30 years ago and keeps talking to us from a microphone down that amber pit about issues that are no longer on the front burner of most Americans, let alone most women. Most women want national security as their issue. They don't care about equal pay. This is an old story. It's a dead story. It's a nonsensical story. But listen to her go on and on and on, droning on in clip number 18. Well... If he wants to engage in personal attacks from the past, that's his prerogative, you know, so be it. 
I'm going to draw the distinctions between where I stand and where he stands when it comes to equal pay for women, raising the minimum wage, which affects two-thirds of the women who are the ones receiving the minimum wage. Yeah, right. Okay. Right. Now let's listen to her in 19. Again, the same old, same old from uh, Mrs. Clinton. Well, it's been a uh, fair game going back to the Republicans for some years. They can do it again if they want to. That can be their choice as to how to run in this campaign. All right, it's all hot air. Before. She's not well, talking about the classified emails that she ordered her top aide to, uh, to bury. You know, that's a big deal. She could go to jail for this. If it was you or I, you'd be in prison right now. So let's stop the double talk about women's pay, Hillary, and get let's get down to it. Listen to the double talk now at 21 from Miss Democrat Hillary Clinton right now in the Savage Nation. That's just not the way I treated classified information. Uh, headings are not uh, classification uh, notices. And so uh, oftentimes we're trying to get the best information we can. And obviously yeah. what I'm asking for is whatever can be transmitted uh, if it doesn't come through secure uh, to be transmitted on the unclassified uh, system. So, no, mm. there's there's nothing to that like so much else that uh, has been talked about in the last year. Sure. Just laugh your way through it. Just laugh your way through something that you darn well know you did illegally. Now, the question is, will this FBI be able to conduct the investigation and come to the proper conclusion? Because on the Drudge Report, we see the headlines. They didn't make up the stories. He only links them. FBI Clinton probe expands the public corruption track. Pressure growing inside FBI to pursue. Many cases successfully prosecuted with much less evidence. Did you hear that, all you Democrats? All you Soviet citizens of the Hillary universe? Did you hear about that, all you citizens of the Hillary universe? Many, many people have gone to jail for much less. This is a huge deal, and we don't want a double standard in the United States of America. This is a huge deal. The Clinton Foundation is a huge deal. The Clinton Foundation is a public charity which had grants and contributions in excess of $144 million in 2013. And inside the FBI, pressure is growing. We had a good show until right now. I had to be thrown off base at some point, or else it wouldn't be my show. I'd like to clu conclude by saying that there are FBI agents who are screaming, if prosecution does not get pursued, they're going to go crazy. Why? Because many previous public corruption cases have been made and successfully prosecuted with much less evidence than what is emerging in the investigation of Hillary Clinton. That's it. Trump interview on michaelsavage.com. Be here or be nowhere. Thanks for listening. God bless America. Savage.